six, watching The Matrix in Hiroshima, how Agent Smith's logic is absolutely, it's almost sympathizable with uh, that speech where he's talking about the virus, about humanity being this thing that breeds and breeds and breeds and breeds and consumes it. And, and, and some kind of antibody system is not only desirable, but actually necessary. Um, and I was really impressed at how interesting villains become when there's kind of something flawless about their logic. Um, I learned that from you. There's <laughs> <laughs> uh, other people as well, but... Uh, it was very bizarre because I, people will probably never realize this, but as he was writing Bone, bone Clocks, I was writing Sensate and Jupiter ascending, and in this weird way, if you put Sensate and Jupiter ascending together, they're exactly bone clocks. <laughs> and we had just sort of, we'd become friends and we were hanging out, and you don't really, you know, you don't say all of the things that's going on, you know, we were just sort of like, hey, what do you think of this? I was thinking of uh, this thing about this one thing, and maybe this thing. Oh yeah, that's cool, maybe you should try this. You know, you're, it's like talking shop, I guess, or something, but... I didn't realize how similar they were, and this, but there was this one moment where we were like sort of drinking wine, and it was late, and you know, I was talking about time and immortality, and, and you know, uh, his, his, what I love about David too, not only in the, the genre-ness, but also in the um, desire to look at the world and all of its uh, ugliness, as well as it, what's beautiful about it. So he'll, he'll represent, <coughs> I think very realistically some complex social or political truths that are happening as um, 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 shades or uh, um, colors of the kind of predation that we as a species are often guilty of. And, and he, he doesn't, you know, he, he likes that, uh, that it's true and it's real. And so when we were talking about like real predators, there is this thing that was happening simultaneously in our books, which we didn't realize, but we were locating our predators as specifically people who were pursuing immortality based on feeding off of weaker people. And this was a total, like, just strange mind-sharing sensate experience. And I'm reading, I'm actually sh going to shoot sensate, and I'm reading Bone Clocks, and I'm like, what? <laughs> The problem of evil is really tricky because it becomes banal, it becomes spoofable actually, as in Dr. Evil, so easily. Um, and to come up with a plausible um, motive for monstrous acts, that keeps the Agent Smith kind of pretty convincing rationale really, uh, as well. That, that there's, for me, the, the only solution to that Rubik's Cube is, uh, or certainly the most attractive solution to that multi-layered problem, uh, is the motive of not wanting to die. Because that's something we can all feel. None of us want to, uh, all being well. And um, It taps in with uh, my midlife crisis as well. Uh, <laughs> and and th there's just something extremely convincing about it uh, and plausible. And yeah, go on. Uh, I just, aside, I just love how books about the coming end of the world are usually written by like 50 year old men. <laughs> <laughs> It's the most plausible of Faustian pacts, especially when, 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 the, when the viewpoint shifts to that great scene in The Third Man when they're at the top of the Ferris wheel. Uh, and look at these people, there's seven billion of them on Earth. We only take one or two, occasionally. They, they might not be happy with their lives anyway. Come on, they, sort of, you really want to live, sort of, not for these people, they, they don't really live in the same way we do. Anyway, if you're not a vegetarian, sort of, 
just think about the life forms that have died for you this week. So, come on, why, why get so sentimental just because they belong to the same species as you? I mean, there's a, really, and you still start thinking like this. And, well, you've know, got a point here. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's a first impact which, 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 would, which, which has the, the infinite virtue of, of, of being quite tempting. Right, so you have the range of it in the novels, in the landscape of all of the books where you have these sort of psychic vampires, kind of this big metaphor on the one end, but then you have all of the, the ways that just normal, uh, you know, Republican rich people or, or rich people who don't want to change their lifestyle to help or accommodate other people and they want to hold on to certain um, systems or certain um, pleasures or certain um, um, sort of, they, they don't want to, to limit their, the possibility of what they've grown accustomed to. And those characters are also all in your book. These, these characters who are just, maybe they're not quite the psychic vampire, but <laughs> There are also these levels of predator, which are, are true, and we find ourselves in them, too. I mean, it's like I find myself in some of these, hey, petty revenge. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are complex beings, but I sometimes think the most fundamental dichotomy, duality, if I use that kind of language at this time of the day, uh, between people, it's not actually perhaps not even gender, it's not ethnicity, it's not, it's not parent or non-parent. Um, that was a really subtle side that we need to <laughs> um, it, 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 it's, 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 it's not these things, it's I'm the kind of person who can slip into someone's skin or not, it's I'm the kind of person who can think, well, if I've been born over there and our side is firing missiles at them, then I can't be firing missiles at myself. Or if I was born over there and our warplanes are bombing that hospital, that then, well, that's me in that hospital, possibly, or not. Uh, far bit for me to allude to any kind of left-right divide uh, politically here, but but but. And, and, and I wouldn't because that would be too clumsy. Um, neither side of the political spectrum has a monopoly on it. Uh, but um, uh, this is a fundamental division between human beings that I think about a lot. And it's also true what you say about there being a little bit of the other in oneself as well. Uh, and so before we get too self-congratulatory, it's good to remember Solzhenitsyn's famous maxim about the line between good and evil, not running down between any two countries, or, or running down the middle of a town, or running between human beings, but running down and through every single human heart. Ooh. That's a good end quote. <laughs>